You've become family to us, as Dale was talking about. Uh, you've allowed us to be family with you. And uh, thank you for the privilege. Thank you for the gift. Thank you for your expressions of joy and love. Thank you for the worship this morning as we gather our hearts together. I want us to think for the next few moments about the gift of Christmas. The gift of Christmas. In Matthew, the first chapter, just a couple of verses, 22nd, 23rd, and 24th verses. We are going to read those verses and look at the gift of Christmas. Uh, Orrin Arnold once said, here's some Christmas gift suggestions. To your enemies, forgiveness. To an opponent, tolerance. To a friend, your heart. To a customer, service. To all, charity or love. To every child, a good example. And to yourself, respect. Irma Bombeck once wrote, there's nothing sadder in the world than to wake up Christmas morning and then not be a child. <laughs> Look at what Matthew records in his gospel. Actually, let's go back and read the 21st verse. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is God with us. The gift of Christmas. Let's bow together for a moment of prayer. Gracious Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for this time of worship. Thank you for these, your people. Thank you for the joy in the journey. Thank you for the reminder and the bumps in the road on the journey. You are faithful. You guide us through. You teach us. You equip us. You take us beyond that we do not bog down and worry and be defeated. But because of you, we might be joyful and rejoice, for great is our God. Thank you for the message of Christmas, the anticipation, the arrival, and the promised return of Jesus the Christ, the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth, the greatest gift to be given. Thank you for this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The gift of Christmas. As he speaks here, he tells us a couple of things for us to think about in that gift. Think for a moment of one of the most cherished gifts you ever received on Christmas morning. Something that was given because of great love for you. I think for many of us, there is a lot of gifts. Uh, my goodness, in our house as the kids were growing up, it wasn't so much Christmas morning that was the panic. It was the night before in the assembly room <laughs> that I seem to remember much of. But I think for each of us, there are certain things that we cherish that were presented to us for such a time as that. I do hope that in this season of the year we take just a few moments and consider the greatest gift that was given, as Bruce said, doesn't become commonplace for us, does not become something that is just an old story, but is a fresh story that the God who created everything that is stepped out of heaven and came to earth and Jesus the Christ, his son, walked among us in order that a world full of darkness might have the promise, the hope, the blessed assurance of life 
through His finished work. The world seems pretty dark sometimes, doesn't it? Uh, if we could put it in a Chris, Chris, Christmas um, picture, there's no presents under the tree. But because of Him, everything changes. And I want you to see a couple of things that I think are told in these three simple verses that I hope are true for us today as well. Uh, look with me, if you would, that the first thing it talks about is that she bore a son. And the first thing I want you to see is the act of faith that was given. Do you, or is it just me, ever sometimes become doubtful that there can be any good? When we were living in a day with our children at home and landlines, remember when the phone used to have a connection? <laughs> it was, it actually it was a leash, I've learned. You couldn't move too far away from it if you wanted to keep talking. And I remember we'd be sitting at dinner with the family, the four kids, we'd be having some family time, and the phone would ring. And without a doubt, I became cynical. That's a salesperson having the audacity to call now. And so I must confess that my response when I said hello was probably not the most jovial. <laughs> most of the time I was right. Somebody wanting me to buy something. Sometimes in the journey of life we can become cynical. And, and we can lose focus and heart and hope in the midst of all the stuff going on around us. I, I think we're in a cynical age. Nobody believes anybody, but everybody wants somebody to tell the truth, but they don't believe them when they tell them. Someone once said, I can tell when they're lying, their lips move. <laughs> Picture for a moment, 2,000 years ago, a young lady given over to a young man, that suddenly something miraculous happens in the darkness of their world. It's an incredible time. It's a hard time. There is warring. There's poverty. There's abuse and misuse. There's hatred. Sounds a lot like our day. And the angel of the Lord comes to this young lady and says, God has found favor with you. You shall have a child born of God. For a moment, in the midst of all her hesitancy to have any faith, she had to think back across the ages that there was the promise. There was the promise. There was a promise given throughout the ages that the Messiah would come. And all of Israel, and I even believe the world, groaned for hope to have a faith that it may not be as bad as it seems sometimes. And you shall give the name to this child, Emmanuel. I don't care who it is. There is a longing in the heart of everyone for faith that something has to be better than it feels like sometimes. We just went to see the new Star Wars movie last night. You know what I learned from that movie? There's going to be another one. <laughs> That's what I learned from that. That's exactly it. 
But in the midst of that, if you hope to see it, I don't want to give anything away, but there is that constant tension between believing things can be better and an oppression of evil that seeks to push down and control. And those who have a burning within their heart to be driven to liberty and freedom and life better than it is right now. And they'll pay the price for that. They have a faith. Do you know one of the gifts Christmas gives to you and to me, no matter what our circumstances may feel like right now? A faith that God's in control. And that God has a plan. And that God has a purpose for you and for me. Marrying, up until this point, was just a young lady Jewish lady in a community with a lot of other people. And suddenly God says, I have a purpose for you. And it's going to impact the world. Faith does that. Faith impacts the world when you act upon that which God has given to you. But there's a second thing I want you to see in this passage. Not only do you see Mary... And not only do you see all of Israel with a hope for a Savior that will save them from their sin, but secondly, a fulfillment. Look in verse 22. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. I'm quickly reminded of a passage in the New Testament that says, He that has begun a good work in you, he will see it through to completion. Sometimes along the journey, that's hard to see. Sometimes when you take a couple of blows upside the head, that's hard to be convinced of. But God has given us each the gift this year of fulfillment of what He has started in you and in me. He will see through to completion. And no one can stop Him. So I should live like that in the fulfillment of his promise. Think how difficult it must have been for some of those during the period that we read in 1st and 2nd Kings and 1st and 2nd Chronicles. Do you ever wonder how many times they looked at each other and went, is this really going to turn around? Is this really going to come about? Let's go even farther back than that. Let's go to the Israelites as they were going across the wilderness. They got so excited because Moses, the deliverer, had come and he's leading them out. And in just a couple of days, we're going to be to a land of promise and this is going to get better. What do you mean we're going to wander for 40 years? Fulfillment is not on my timeline or your timeline. It's on God's timeline. But do you know the good thing about that? He'll finish what he starts. And he'll finish it exactly as he said he would do. The fulfillment is all through the centuries. Think of it as an anvil swinging back and forth from one extreme to another. In the beginning, right in the Garden of Eden with the fall of Adam and Eve... He said, I'll bruise, you might bite my heel, but I'll bruise your head, speaking to Satan. And the first mark was written down of prophecy. And then it swung all the way to the other side, and another prophecy was given of the hope that would come because of the sinful nature of this old world and of our hearts. And then it would swing this way, not so far this time. And it would swing this way, not so far this time. To every time the prophet spoke and gave throughout the Old Testament over 300 prophecies to the coming of Christ. It continued to narrow it down even to the place. And somebody said, well, wasn't that convenient? You all took the story of Jesus, went back and picked out the notes that made it line up with Jesus. Wasn't that convenient? That's not what happened. The Old Testament, the canon, the, the books of the Old Testament, as we have them now, 
were what's called canonized. In other words, they were set aside as a sacred, holy text from God at least 200 years prior to Christ's coming. Some would say even up to 400 years prior to His coming. 200 to 400 years before Jesus came on the earth, the text of the Old Testament was agreed upon, prayed over, and believed to be of God. There is no way then to twist the story to on the point when Jesus the Christ came to this earth to suddenly tweak some of those details so it fits Him. It was already agreed upon. It was fulfillment. In the New Testament, as the Apostle Paul came to the earth and he had a radical transformation on the road to Damascus and, and his heart was turned from self to Christ, from religion to relationship, he was forever changed. And he began to expound the truths of the gospel. We look back still profound at the depth of his words a call to the church, a call to the last days. Oh, speaking of the last days, look how many texts, Old Testament and in New Testament, say He's coming again. Not someone like Him, but Him. Prophecies of what those last days look like. And some people say, well, it's difficult to know for sure what all that means. And it is just like we experienced as we drove across the Southwest. You see, out in the southwest, we'd be driving down the interstate, and we'd look up ahead, and we'd see a whole mountain range in front of us. And from my perspective, it looked like one set of mountains. And we'd drive and drive and drive and drive and drive and drive. All of a sudden, we'd come to the first layer of mountains. And do you know what? Some of the mountains we had been looking at, we weren't to yet. We'd pass by some mountains, but there were still others in front of us. And we'd think, well, or I would think, well, there you go. That's another ridge of mountains. No, that was several layers of mountains. But as we journeyed on the road, they began to, we began to see the distance between one and the other. Were they all still mountains? Absolutely. It's the same way with the prophecies of the second coming of Christ, that it looks like a layering or one event, but as we drive through them, as we live through them, there becomes a distinction with one that is past and another is past until we arrive at the ultimate goal of His return. Fulfillment. Can you trust in what the Scripture says is yet to come? As I look back and see what has been fulfilled, the answer is yes. As I look at what he's teaching me today in the fulfillment, yes. It says in this verse of Scripture, they anticipated the coming of the Christ. Do you know, not only this year do you get the gift of faith that enables you and I to live through today, but the promise of fulfillment that he's going to be there in our tomorrow. Wow. Wow. I don't know what tomorrow holds. Kind of scares me sometimes because I know what a couple of days this last year held. But he's there. And it's the gift of fulfillment that he brings. Thirdly, I want you to see, look in that last verse of Scripture. It says, Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call him his name Emmanuel. Some like to translate that as a young lady, which she was, but very distinctly and clearly, she was a virgin. The scripture says Joseph did not know her until after she gave birth to Emmanuel. The third thing is the gift of favor. Favor on Mary, favor on Joseph, and, and, and don't miss favor on us. God's favor, His gift to you this year is His favor. He's always there. You are always welcome to approach His throne. I don't know many kings that I could get audience with, but when you walk into the presence of Jesus, He says, draw near. 
you have favor with God and with men. Oh, they may not always like it. They may not always act like it, like we were talking about earlier. But there is God's favor is on us as he lives in us, as we demonstrate through our lives. He is my Lord. Nothing else matters. Because his gift to me this year is his favor. Several years ago, we were on a mission trip in Ecuador. We uh, had gone into downtown uh, Quito and had to get a cab back out to the hotel where the whole group was staying. So four of us piled into a Ecuador taxi cab. And my first question when I looked at the cab driver, can you take us to our motel? I should have known when he looked at me and went, see. <laughs> I said, I think it was the Marriott we were at. And I said, the Marriott? He goes, oh, see, 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 come on, come on. So we, I don't think he said, come on, though. But um, we jumped in the cab and began driving around Ecuador, <laughs> around Quito. I looked at the people in the back and said, I don't think he knows where we're going. <laughs> and I, I may have had some flyer or card or something I picked up and pointed. He goes, oh, see, 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 yeah, see. And we kept driving. And we kept traveling down roads that didn't look, I don't know, safe, <laughs> lighted, obviously not familiar. And finally, off in the distance, I saw the top of the hotel. It was a rather tall place there in Quito. And I went, there, there. Oh, yeah, see, see. And so we drove some more. <laughs> and finally, we got a couple of blocks away. And I didn't know how good his English was, but I hope he understood the word. Stop. <laughs> how much do I owe you? And we stopped. And he gave me an amount. I think he knew English. <laughs> and we walked a couple of blocks to our destination. Because there was nothing more important to us than to get where we needed to go. That's the gift of Christmas. There's a lot of distractions in the world. There's a lot of breakdown of communication in our world. But God's favor is on you. It's His. God's fulfillment is promised to you because you're His. He's given the ability, the gift of faith for you to walk with Him every single day. That's a gift. We live in a time that is destroyed by drugs. We are, we are being consumed by that which kills us. And it breaks my heart. We are being destroyed by suicide of so many who just give up and decide to call an end to it. And it breaks my heart. It's difficult. And if without Christ there is no hope, there's no promise, there's only despair. But through God's wisdom, He wants us to remember our faith is not in my endurance, but it's in His perseverance. The fulfillment is not dependent upon me doing the exact perfect thing today. The fulfillment is in the fact He did it! And the favor, no matter how dark and painful the sting of death, isolation, separation, God's favor is with you is only He can give to give you hope today, 2017.
There's not another Christmas gift you can match, you can get that can match that. Great is his faithfulness. He renews it every day. May we celebrate the gift of Christmas found in his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, the Lord. Let's pray. Gracious God, thank you for your gift. Lord, as we sit here, we're mindful of hurts, pains, despair, disappointment, bumps in the road. But through the midst of all of that, you've given us a gift that is the only gift that endures. Faith, fulfillment, and favor. May we live like King's kids in the world today. Hallelujah. Christ has come. Hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah. You have loved us so. Hallelujah. The joy is ours because of you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we stand together and sing a hymn of invitation, I'll be at the front. If God has spoken to your heart, I encourage you to respond this morning to that which he says to each of us.